Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to CRUG in this rainy uh, October uh, afternoon, and uh, welcome to CRUG from wherever you might be joining us. Uh, you know, again, this month uh, online, obviously, instead of uh, being at the library in Seattle, and hopefully, um, a little bit of an update on that. Hopefully, we get to go back to the library in 2021, uh, early 2021, but we don't quite know yet. Uh, but certainly for the remainder of this year, we're here right online with GoTo or Zoom or whatever might be the case. So um, again, welcome to CRUG. My name is David Diyarsa. I sit as uh, president of the board of CRUG uh, this year, and uh, it's my pleasure to host you on this webinar uh, about uh, Revit fabrication parts. So a um, couple of uh, uh, updates from me here, a couple of slides that I'm actually gonna turn off my, uh, my webcam here and show you my screen, and uh, then we'll turn it over to our presenter for today. So um, hopefully everybody that's gonna gather, gathers up over the next couple of minutes while I'm giving an update and uh, and we'll get right into the important part of the presentation, which is why you're really here. So I'll turn this off and um, take a look at today's agenda. Uh, today's presentation is brought to you by longtime CRUG sponsor, TopCon Solutions, and we certainly appreciate TopCon being with us for so long and, and providing great content for us. Uh, today we've got a uh, returning champion, CRUG champion, uh, Kurt Egley, um, you know, one of our favorite presenters at uh, CRUG for a long time. Um, uh, going to talk about a little bit of a niche um, topic, but uh, certainly very interesting to those of you that uh, love all things Revit, uh, like myself. Uh, fabrication and Revit, fabrication parts, how to get to actually uh, fabricating uh, out on the uh, you know on the factory floor to get it out to the job site uh, all from Revit. So really interesting, a uh, little bit of a, a newer topic, something that's been in the works for a while, something that I know a, a handful of people that are really trying to get to uh, bypassing the whole CAD environment and going straight from Revit models all the way out to fabrication. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, quick shout out to all of our sponsors for 2020 up here on uh, on screen. Uh, so a big thank you to everybody for making this year possible and uh, CRUG possible in general. Uh, our sponsorships, as I've mentioned earlier with uh, TopCon there, for the most part, uh, pretty long-standing relationship. So we really appreciate that relationship and we appreciate all of our sponsors. Um, also another quick shout out to all my fellow board members uh, for helping putting these presentations together and curate the content and in general uh, steer the direction of this group which is uh, it's been a great collaboration over the years to be with these uh, fine folks on screen here uh, putting this content together for you um, quick mention as usual of our YouTube channel take a look at uh, YouTube uh, forward slash C forward slash C rug or just search C rug or Seattle Revit user group on YouTube and you'll find us. Uh, we tend to post uh, the recaps of these meetings plus some other content up on YouTube, uh, especially nowadays that we're uh, online rather than in person. Uh, the YouTube channel takes on a little bit more importance. So we're hoping to expand the use of that, put a little bit more content up there um, and start making a little bit better use of it. So check it out. Uh, hit the subscribe button so you get notified anytime we put something uh, new up there and share with all your friends. Um, quick employment announcement. Uh, we did this one a couple of months ago, but the cell and VDC team still looking for uh, a couple more uh, VDC integrators. I believe over the next um, two to three months, uh, there's a hope to fill in uh, about uh, somewhere between two and four positions over the next year. So. Um, depending a little bit of how things go and the kind of applicants that come in. So uh, you can reach out to me directly if you're interested in this one or definitely check out Selen uh, on the website. I'm sure that there's a, a, a link to um, to this position, but uh, you know, things being what they are with this industry, relationships are pretty big. So it's always nice if you reach out to me, I can pass it along and, and put your resume at the top of the pile. So. Uh, and with that, I am going to shut up, get off the uh, screen over here and hand it over to Kurt at TopCon. And again, thank you so much for presenting today and for sponsoring and uh, take it away, Kurt. Uh, thank you, David. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen. Uh, uh, 
here in just a second. Hopefully it's coming back up again. I um, yep. appreciate that. And I'll hand it back over to you at the end there, David. We'll um, uh, work on um, gathering questions as we go. Um, I, David uh, said a little something about me, at least here's a picture anyway of me, since I'm not using my webcam today. A little, um, quite a bit of my uh, background is from Autodesk. I spent uh, 17 years there and I've been doing this kind of a role for, uh, I guess it's been nine years now, a uh, little bit there. A little bit about the company that I work for uh, and uh, David had referred to TopCon Solutions. Um, we're the retail and support arm of Topcon positioning systems. And I think you've seen our equipment in the field, you know, the, the people wearing those orange vests and hard hats for uh, land surveying, but also machine automation, the bulldozers and the like, and then uh, vertical construction layout uh, buildings. And that's where I come in. I'm on the building side of uh, that horizontal versus vertical construction. And then besides selling the complete portfolio of Topcon products, um, we're a platinum tier Autodesk reseller and a platinum level Bluebeam partner with uh, certified instructors on staff. Uh, we are in 13 uh, locations, 20 states, 13 brick and mortar locations and 13 states. 20 states uh, for um, uh, the spread. And actually we're in Alaska too. I don't see that one on there. Maybe it's just off your screen somewhere like it is off of mine. Um, we will, you know, hopefully generate some questions as we go. I'm going to have you keep those till the end, but if you look in uh, go to webinar, you'll see that there's a questions area. Maybe keep them in the questions area instead of the chat area and go ahead and fill and feed in some questions there and I'll either try and get to them at the end or uh, we'll review them and then get back to you a little later with um, the answer of your dreams, hopefully. <laughs> so um, uh, feel free to do that that once. Um, eighth inch, let me get right into it. So um, it, part of what uh, decided got me to want to have this uh, part of the presentation is that's it really impacting all of us is that more and more in the specs that are coming out uh, during construction, they're looking for tolerances of only an eighth inch. And this is not even some kind of a prefab crane it in the place kind of a thing, but uh, part of this is about more and more prefab happening and your accuracy has to be um, higher and higher. And so uh, you know, generally when we're working with Revit elements, whether they're, uh, you know, walls, doors, windows, things like that, th these are LOD 200, like level of development 200, uh, which is design level. And then uh, LOD 350, LOD 400, uh, those refer to fabrication level. And I'll show you how we can work with the fabrication uh, components in Revit. Uh, using the fabrication services, but I'll also show you how we can take design level and convert it over into fabrication level. So I'll be I'll be showing that you that as well. So uh, with regard to this, there's a couple of different um, solutions that come from Autodesk for fabrication. Uh, some of them are uh, AutoCAD based, and then there's Revit uh, for fabrication. So uh, some of our customers are using Plant 3D, which is an AutoCAD based one to get the fabrication done, and it also does PNIDs uh, as well. Uh, also, this is um, generally accepted as also a norm, uh, which is another CAD-based one, which is Fabrication CAD MEP. And um, depending on what you're doing, you can additionally get CAM duct with that. Obviously, that's a duct thing uh, for nesting and you know sending it to the plasma cutters or coil line. Um, and then additionally, uh, you can have SMEP for um, uh, estimation. Now, down on the Revit side, uh, you know, I put up a bullet here, um, Autodesk Fabrication, which Autodesk refers to, but, um, uh, you know, that's just the um, tools and the engine under the hood that I'm referring to there. It actually is just part of your Revit. You don't have to use it, but when you install it, it's there. Here, Here's the kicker, though, that's really um, key to this, is that the database under the hood is shared uh, by both of these. 
So um, if you're working in AutoCAD and getting some of it done there, maybe you're using CamDuct or something like that, uh, the databases you um, uh, create and or start up and then augment with additional parts and items uh, will get shared over into Revit and we can use them over there. So I'll show you a little bit of uh, how that works here. Uh, let me come over to Revit and we'll get right into it then. Um, I'm going to start once um, with uh, this model and I want to do a thank you shout out to Victolic. I, um, one of the um, uh, Victolic guys um, who I worked with when I was out in eastern Pennsylvania where their headquarters is shared uh, this uh, via Autodesk um, University presentation, the data set here, and I thought this would be a good one to um, help me walk you through some of this. Um, you can see here that I got it split up into three parts. Um, up in this area is design a model. So this is all the LOD 200, you know, like if you hit duct or pipe or conduit um, uh, out of the box from the systems tab, you'd be getting that. Um, you can also augment your families and make the families um, uh, uh, stop the pipe at the appropriate spot, you know, so if it's threaded, there's actually an overlap. And then down here, all of these are uh, fabrication parts in this area that I'll be getting to. Uh, so let me go ahead and open up a plan view here once. And here's the same three design, the extra augmented families, uh, which I might look at, and then the MEP parts that are out here as well. Um, now, uh, as David was saying, um, we know under normal, like I've presented um, to CRUG before, um, I've been trying to choose topics that are um, interesting to everybody, regardless of what you do. Uh, architect, structural engineer, my mom, for that matter, I don't know. Okay, maybe she's not interested in any of this stuff, but um, so, you know, you have to choose things like templates I did one on, parameters I did one on, uh, detailing I did one on, uh, coordinates systems David did this last time, uh, uh, David Campbell did. But um, I could do a presentation that's just on curtain walls, too, because I know there's a lot of architects. Maybe I'll do that sometime where it's just curtain walls. But uh, with this being online, it seemed like a good time to be able to include people that normally wouldn't get into downtown Seattle for a meeting. Uh, so let me just start a little bit kind of simply here. This is um, something that, um, you know, uh, uh, anybody that's working in MEP uh, knows to be true, but, uh, you know, like if I select on a pipe and slide it around, uh, now if you're an architect type, uh, this is just like a wall, right? See how, you know, everything is, that one shortened, this one lengthened, that one, you know, depending on which direction uh, we move it. You know, these are all design level ones that we're working with here. Now the behavior in the fabrication uh, level parts is the same. You know, so if I pick on this one and I uh, slide it over, the parts move with it, and you can see the same kind of thing here. I could set the length on that. I can pick on the end of it and drag it out and it becomes longer. So uh, it's gonna feel very familiar if you're used to working uh, with uh, LOD 200 out of the box stuff from Autodesk there. Um, so, uh, and if you want to, you know, work on pipe, I'll show you several different ways uh, how we can create these. Um, you know, I might uh, have a pipe like this. I'm just doing a create similar here and placing a couple of them out here. Um, maybe I pick on an elbow here and create similar. You can see that uh, this one here is a MEP fabrication pipe work. This is a Victolic one that I'm working with right now and uh, create, a, you know, an elbow and put that on there. I'm just stick building it right now, if you will. Um, if I zoom into that area and I'll wait for my screen to catch up here just a little bit uh, so you can see the same thing as me. You can see that just going in and put the fittings on there. Um, if I uh, select on one of the elbows I dropped in, um, it has some different controls that you normally wouldn't be able to use in um, straight up or have it LOD 200 kind of work here, you know, and if I go uh, create another one of those, it says, hey, I see the end of it and it's pointing up, let me go up for you and so on like that. Now, it, you know, it is it is different, <laughs> you know, it, no doubt about it, you know, like, um, you know, if I go to a pipe here, you know, this is 
LED 200 design level pipe that we're looking at. And if I go, you know, it has a lot of parameters hanging off of it, instance parameters. If you go to edit type, uh, probably the main big difference here between the two is even though they're both system families here, you can see uh, there's a routing preferences button under uh, design level that will go back to generic content or your own loaded content. And, um, uh, you know, like in this case, we're using copper K. And when it gets to a an elbow condition, I mean, the behavior is to go grab that loadable family to get it done and not quite the same over here in uh, fabrication you know if i look at these um, i pick on a fabrication level pipe like you're seeing there and i hit edit type there's no routing preferences uh, but very much a system family so in other words you're not going to be able to get into the family editor and if you hit on one of the elbows it's also system family, so you're going to have to get these out of um, the services, the fabrication services, which I'll show you how to load and such like that. Okay, um, if you're going to uh, model, uh, maybe what I'll do is go back over to this view for this one. Um, let me let me just model a few things. Uh, I'm going to do quite a bit of pipe here, so let me try some others. Um, right now, I have. Um, uh, docked over here a, uh, with my project browser. I got the MEP fabrication parts docked and I've got several different services loaded up. Um, there's a couple different uh, pipe services loaded up in here uh, and then I've got an HVAC in here and I've got electrical containment, you know, so, you know, a lot of, uh, um, you know, ladder, cable tray, such like that in there. Uh, let me try a little bit of those ones. Say, you know, say I, I pick which um, that I want to work with this one here. And then I, I can choose a size here, for example. Um, as I'm working, maybe I want a nine by two, for example. And uh, it goes to my rules and figures out how long it ought to put it in there. You know, so I click and then drop another one in and drop another one in. So that, this is how I was doing create similar a little bit earlier. Uh, this is how I might go about uh, putting on, um, you know, if I'm stick building this one at a time and I say stick building, you know, there's click, 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 um, making a pipe or whatever. Uh, same sort of thing here. If I uh, zoom back a little bit over, if I say I want to go, let's go with a 90 degree and then go up you know, straight like that, and up we go. So, um, you know, here I am modeling, and you can do this in um, 3D, you can do it in 2D if you want to. Um, the same sort of thing is true if you're uh, working with ductwork. Um, in this case, I loaded up the supply air here, and you can see um, the different components that at least came along with that service. Uh, for that's rectangular there. Um, uh, this one also has round bot out in it. Uh, it's looking like this. I'll let my screen catch up a little bit for you. The tube, the bends, uh, that sort of a thing. Okay, just wanted you to see a bit. Um, and then uh, there's you know a few more going on here with end of line equipment and such like that. Let me um, let me start with rectangular here once so you can kind of get uh, a sense for that. I'm going to go with a straight. Um, piece and you can see that it already has a look back at my rules that I've set up. It's kind of similar the way we set up rules and stairs and for that matter and, and curtain wall grids and, and that kind of a thing on how long it should be. Um, and then uh, and then what size you can actually you can see down here uh, it's using a nine uh, by two. Um, if I go to edit part I can do it here as well. Um, here's that same nine by two. And I could say, you know, I'd like to go with a 14 um, by um, 10, say, in there uh, for that. And then the connectors, uh, you know, if you pick on those, you'll be able to see your connectors um, highlighting. Uh, now, these parts, uh, some of them are coming right out of the Autodesk provided database, and some of them you can create yourself, which I'll get to towards the end of the presentation to give you a teaser on how to get that done. And then, you know, I say OK, and then uh, go ahead and place one, place another, place another. You know, there I am building uh, ductwork as well. Um, if I go to, maybe this will be uh, more fun in 3D here to see it uh, as I build it. Uh, you put a radius bend on that, 
drop that in and then go back to a straight again. So, um, you know, if this is, if this twirls your skirt, if this is the way to do it for you, then, um, you know, uh, feel free to uh, use, use um, stick built like that, as opposed to what I'll be showing you soon, which is multi-point routing there, but know that you can do that as well. Um, as far as the inline uh, equipment goes, uh, some of these aren't, uh, uh, included in mine, but I'm going to put this one here on the end of that to go with that one in my database here. And then, um, you know, so here's an air handling unit that I think I'll just rotate it around here once so that the connectors are up and then put another, you know, I'll just go with another straight one right up here on top and let it choose. Whoops, I put that one on the end here. I'll make it go up for you. There you go, and it resizes. You know, you've seen this kind of a thing before that we can do in uh, straight up Revit out of the box. Now, um, LOD 200, LOD 400, or 350, that sort of thing. Um, there's uh, it's quite a bit of difference here. You know, like if I zoom in um, massively close on one of these decks, I'm looking right down inside of it, um, and what I'm seeing here um, is the uh, margin area. Uh, the, for the seam allowance, you know, the seam allowance on the top there uh, to accommodate the bend is showing up as well. Um, and uh, so that sort of a thing takes place besides, um, like with uh, pipe, for example, uh, some of them are welded end to end, uh, some of them are slip in. And if you're going to get accurate links uh, for your pipe, you know, you're going to have to. Um, make sure that it accommodates the threaded end prep and such like that on it. Um, there also underneath here you saw there was inline equipment in here as well. Uh, maybe I'll take this one with a handle on it, you know, so they have that. Um, and if I just get over uh, the duct, say, let's see, oh, here, um, you uh, use the insert uh, part uh, button up here to insert it in instead of free um, Oops, instead of replacing it like I just did there accidentally. Here, I put it up here. Got to wait till it highlights and then drop it in. And you'll see there, like that, right? So that, that's the inline stuff is in there as well. Um, okay, so uh, let's, I talked about multi-point routing a little bit here. So let me go back over to that view once. Uh, if I'm working with that, uh, with the rectangular again, I'm going to come back to uh, rectangular and uh, multi-point routing is this little button off to the side here instead of working one at a time. Uh, here, let me turn that off so that it's not quite so confusing for you. I'm going to go with uh, start multi-point routing and um, maybe I'll, I'll just keep going farther off here to the left or to the right, the other right. So with multi-point routing, I'm just pulling it out to whatever links I want. This is very much like we're used to uh, working with uh, Revit um, out of the box, uh, pipe, duct, conduit, cable tray, uh, uh, sort of a thing. Now, if I don't like the kind of bends that are going in there, you can see that the one it's using here is a, a square bend. Um, I can say that I would like to exclude this one and instead use the radius bend as I'm working. I'll get more into this later, but there's a exclusions mode I can enter down here in the lower right-hand corner of that dialog, and it brings up little squares next to things I'd like to exclude. So I can say, uh, let's exclude the square bend. Uh, so this way, when I'm, I'm saying, let's uh, do some multi-point routing, and I go go from here to there, to there, to there, to there, for example, there it's it's going to the next one over to the radius bend there, okay? And then you can come back out of it if you want and leave that excluded as you're working. So anyway, as I said, we're gonna be looking more at that a little later on. Um, let's, um, let's see uh, how the hangers work here once. Uh, this thing's bugging me, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Uh, let's work on hangers next. Uh, they include um, hangers in here, which are kind of interesting uh, to um, use them in a project because they're, at least they're more adaptable than anything I've built in a family editor with this. I'm going to use a rectangular on this one because uh, obviously I'm working with rectangular. You can see here that as I'm moving it around, it's saying, well, where do you want to put a Kurt? And then uh, if I get over the top, of uh, the duct, you can see it highlight. 
and I just, um, if I get away from it, it's not associated. And if I'm here, it's associated and it sizes itself. Uh, so you can see here that um, it uh, determined what the size of the duct was. It will adapt to a, a duct size changes as well. And uh, check these out when you get a little closer. This one only has uh, the default here, but uh, some of them have uh, additional rod bear choices, uh, bearing rod choices um, um, underneath here where you might go from half inch to three quarter inch. Um, some of them also have uh, controls like this on the end, the little uh, grip that we're used to. So you can make it accommodate two side by side if you want to and, and so on and so forth there. Um, I wanted to um, show you, uh, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll use uh, pipe for this next one. Uh, right here, I put in a um, uh, structural member. Uh, so this is a wide flange beam that's you know six feet above it or so. Uh, kind of interesting the way that it works with these hangers. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the Victolic services and uh, go to um, one of the hangers here. Um, you know, there's a clevis hanger and then a, a trapeze hanger also, but um, I'm going to go with this one right here, clevis hanger. And um, as I'm moving it around, look what happens when, when it's saying, hey, you can't put it out here in the middle of nowhere, but hey, there's a pipe. As soon as I'm underneath the structural member, now this might be a floor or a roof or something like that, the hanger. Uh, will extend its bear rod up to uh, the bottom of that truss or whatever's coming through. As soon as I get off of it, like I pushed it too far up on my screen to where it's not underneath it anymore, uh, it got short. And you saw that with the one that I put on the duct. When I come back to it, it will instantly um, attach like that uh, to be at the bottom of the, and if I were to move this up or down, then that would slide up and down too. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, like if I change the um, size of this uh, pipe right here, uh, right now it's at eight inches, say that I went up to 10 inches, uh, look at the, I'm gonna hit 10 in the left here, but you look over to where the red is in the middle of the screen and watch the clevis hanger. Um, think you know see how it resizes itself depending on what the pipe is so that's like that um there's insulation in here too uh which we're used to working with and in, in uh straight up uh revit here uh you know um and it has um insulation specification that you can set up behind the scenes as to what do you want like general insulation for examples uh, i have it set up at an inch and a half uh, the insulation looks like that. The clevis hangers inside with the insulation uh, wrapped around. And if I were to pick on that again, and then just I'll slide this down once, so you can see in this area right here that it's picking up on my inch and a half um, thickness, and it knows this is a 10 inch, so that makes it a overall size of 13 inches. It's telling me, and you know, like Revit does, it's kind of grayed out when we're you know, just um informational coming back you can't change it there you have to change it someplace else one of those kind of deals okay um i wanted to show you a different data set here once um for this next step uh, here's one where i do not have any fabrication services loaded up and uh, this dialog if you haven't seen it before will fire up automatically um, if you were to issue the fabrication parts uh, icon, you know, if you click on that under the systems tab, it'll automatically fire up. But um, it's also um, uh, one of their dialogues right here. Um, because I have no services loaded up at the moment, which I will be loading some, so you see how that works. Unlike my other project I was working in, um, uh, you'll see what Autodesk gives you out of the box here too, and then uh, you'll see that this populates over here. Uh, so uh, one thing I'm gonna do here uh, as I'm working, I got a number of different kind of pipes in here. And you can see here, this one is sanitary. Uh, that one's sanitary also. Uh, this right here is cold water, domestic cold water. There's some hydronic supply and return and hot water and so on and so forth in here. I'm just gonna use a regular uh, Revit. Um, you've probably used it before, kind of a thing, at least MEP land, we use it a lot. 
uh, which is filters under visibility graphic overrides. And I've got this one set up uh, so that depending on what the uh, um, system type is that's being used uh, that you saw over here in the dialog uh, system classification you could use as well if you're underneath here it will um, uh, if it's sanitary it's going to turn it off you know if it's hydronic of any kind it's going to turn it off and only cold water will be left and um, will be highlighted in blue so i went ahead and hit okay on that and then you'll see a bunch of pipes disappear this is not really about fabrication i just um, wanted to um, clean this up a little bit so you can see it if we zoom in a little closer you can see um, actually there's also sinks and things like that in there i just want to concentrate on pipes and fittings right now um, if you looked at this design level you can see even though uh, the pipe itself, let me pick on the pipe, is copper. The fitting is not adjusted to uh, slip uh, the elbow over the top of the pipe. So um, actually the cut length on this thing would be wrong. Uh, you know, it says here's the length of it, blah, 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 120 eighths of an inch. But uh, some people using design level get a pretty good, pretty good sense by just um, in their having a formula into their schedules to add a little bit of length into that. But you wouldn't want to use that or depend on that for um, for fabrication. So um, so this it, just talking about categories a little bit. This is a pipe. I don't know, a little bit of the dull, dull, you know, duh factor there, Kurt, but, and here is a pipe fitting. Um, and then um, I'm going to drop in a couple of um, fabrication uh, components here and here as well. So I talked about uh, going to the um, systems tab and it's right in this area right here. Uh, you can click on fabrication part and and it'll and or um, right here in the corner there's a little bit of an arrow down there that you can uh, go to that'll launch this next dialogue as well i'm going to go to the settings button in the lower right corner and that brings up that dialogue you can see here i have no fabrication services loaded and this is straight out of the box autodesk gives you a couple of imperial content and if you're from way out of town, need metric, those are in there too. Um, according to Autodesk, um, the difference between the Imperial content um, is that it has manufacturer's names associated with it. Um, and if you look through the list here, you know, we're talking about variable flow, refrigerant, gas refrigerant, liquid refrigerant, waste underground. and you know the knowledge autodesk knowledge base says that that's basically the only difference but check them both out because if you look at mep interior imperial content um that's not the same list <laughs> right you know piping welded threaded potable water you know and then up farther here you know ductwork electrical uh, wireway busway that sort of a thing those aren't the same list so um i tend to go back and forth between them because I don't want to have to be making my own parts. So I uh, say that I want to have a variety of services here, some duct work in here. Um, maybe I'd like you know, some electrical in here. Uh, maybe I want some uh, PVC and some uh, copper. You can see just like you would with a schedule, right? If you, uh, these are your available services on the left side and the loaded services over on the right, you just double click on them or hit this button right here, here to bring them across and click OK. And now you have, after the donut finishes spinning, bunches of oh, uh, fabrication level parts to work with and um, you've seen it before already even if this is your first time into it um, you know like if you go to visibility graphics um, you know you're going to find like uh, pipe and pipe fittings and then about five years ago um, a bunch of uh, MEP stuff uh, showed up in here as well right MEP fabrication that's up in this area right here fabrication ductwork pipe work etc they added in some uh, new categories I'm working in 2021 which is the at the time of this um, posting of the video uh, if later they make it into a video um, 
that uh, that was all the categories there were, <laughs> but uh, there, there, um, you could go back to 2019 or 18, that'd be in there too, okay. So, um, so anyway, with that, um, say that uh, if I want to drop in a, a pipe, just like we looked at earlier, I'm going to drop in, uh, say, copper soldered. Say I, I want one of those in here, and maybe I want a fitting, put an elbow on the end of it, put an elbow on, so on and so forth, just like, you know, or just I just dropped it in out there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and thin this down a little bit uh, so that these plumbing fixtures and such disappear. Uh, so um, this is just a regular rabbit thing. It doesn't particularly have to do with um, uh, fabrication, but I'm just going to isolate the categories, which is the four uh, that um, I was referring to. This one, which is fabrication pipe work and a fabrication pipe work elbow and then a regular pipe and a regular fitting here. Okay. So now you can really see it uh, uh, quickly, what it is I'm working with. Uh, this guy right here, big, big, long design level pipe, 41 feet long, right? Uh, this one here, 60 feet long. I mean, that's the way that we work in design. We're just creating big, long ones. But then later, we need to get these to the point where they're not having to be transported on a 60-foot long truck bed, right? So. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is um, I am going to uh, convert these over. So uh, this is standard pipe. So I'm just going to hover, tap the tab key a few times, uh, select the whole chain. I'm going to do the whole shoot and match here. And I'm going to use this button right up here which is designed to fabrication. So design to fabrication. It says, well, hey, you got PVC, you got, you know, welded, blah, blah, blah. There's just, you know, you got all these choices. What do you want here? I'm gonna go with uh, soldered copper, click okay. The donut spins for a little bit here, actually you know, almost 30 seconds it'll spin for, for this um, one story building. This one's the uh, Audubon Education Center that I, I believe Gannett Fleming did in Ohio. They got awards for it that they were nice enough to share with us uh, to work with, to get a little shout out there. Um, anyway, um, it's looking to see if it can find any pipes or fittings um, that have open connectors, and it will warn us of that because we're going to have a few open connectors. Looks like there's 25 of them out there. Um, but you know, if you zoom in a little closer now, I'm gonna take a look at this. After it's done its conversion here, uh, you can see that this one right here is actually that uh, elbow right there, and if you click on the pipe. And you see how the pipe extends um, into here, right? So you're getting a true length out of that. So uh, when you're seeing over here um, for the length and the weight and such like that, um, now, now it's all been converted into uh, fabrication components. So that brings me to the next thing, which wouldn't it be nice if Revit could take what is a 61 foot long pipe and make it those predefined lengths that I wanted. You saw that it was bringing in four foot 11 duct lengths when I was placing them that way. Uh, pipe might come in, I think this one was a 20 footer. Yep, this is set for 20 feet. Um, I'd like to break this up into 20 foot segments. So there's a, a few that are um, big time offenders here. Let's go with these five. I'm just using my control key to select several of them here. And um, they're individual links. So this is only five, or I guess I selected six here. And um, I'm going to use this button up here in the ribbon. This is optimize lengths. I hit on that. And don't it didn't spin for you know much of nothing because <laughs> if you look here, uh, it's broken up that uh, 41 footer into or 47 feet I think this one was into two 20s and it must have been drawing this direction uh, when it was drawn. There's uh, whatever's left over there, and then you know it puts in a coupling in between. Right. And um, so anyway, that one is um, that's how you if you're working in design level and you want to work in uh, you want to convert everything you've done into fabrication level components like that. Um, that's the way to do it. A couple of big Fisher Price buttons in there that are the big hammer for um, uh, moving 
stuff like that along, okay? And that's also how you uh, load yourself up with a uh, new, um, with uh, new services, right? Yeah, because this one, or there's there's already stuff in here, right? Uh, you know, um, what I have in here in this database is I've got um, threaded. And you can see here in the those services, I got threaded, and I got uh, grooved. You know, so these are actually a bunch of Vic uh, style uh, connectors and such. And valves and here's welded down here for example you'll see some green ones pop up welded x and that kind of a thing um so uh when when you're uh working with this um and trying to convert uh, let's it was kind of simple because uh, I needed, with you know, small copper pipe like that, I needed a 90. It just put a 90 on it. Uh, there's quite a few different uh, bends and uh, connecting conditions here that I might want to work with as I'm converting. So I'm going to go back to the design model, uh, uh, which we talked about a little bit earlier uh, with regular pipe and generic fittings on here that are RFAs, Revit family files. And um, I'm going to go ahead and convert this one over just very similar uh, to what we looked at before. Uh, so let me uh, go ahead. There's a couple of open connections down here that it's going to bark about a little later too. But um, say that you just pick and you've got bunches of choices here. Um, and you say, whoops, and I lost it here. You, I pick on that. Here. Hover, tap the tab key. Come on. There we go. And then I'm, I'm going to do design to fabrication on this one right here with a few more things loaded up. And I'm going to use the Victolic services. And I also have some uh, waste from Autodesk uh, loaded into this one as well. And I say go, a couple of the uh, open connectors, it says. But I, I wanted you to look a little closer here at what it did for me during the conversion process. Uh, this guy right here, you know, that's a green one, right? That's the green ones. Those are the welded ones. And you're going to find it over here in the list, right? So it used welded there and then right next to it. And you're going to go over to, you're going to see at this end, for example, pick on that and see it's orange, right? <laughs> if you're just, you know, seeing this quickly, um, the orange ones are one of these here, right? So it's mixing and matching stuff together. Now, maybe I don't want to work that way where it's just, you know, I got a bunch of stuff loaded up and I am trying to convert it over, but I'm trying to not mix and match together sanitary pipe with soldered and so on and so forth if I have them all in one service. Uh, so what we're looking at here, I'm using words like uh, groups and service. So here's the different services that I have up here if you look a little closer i'll zoom in for you whoops zoom in a little closer you can see here um, i got some services and then i got some groups underneath it okay so um and then uh underneath them are the service items themselves and parts here I, i'm not pr going to probably get into parts much today so um to exclude that um if i want to exclude that um since and i want to go just with grooved here uh, when it does, I'm going to convert another area here, and I don't want it to mix in the welded or the threaded into that. Uh, so um, I uh, showed you uh, this button right down here before I'm in the lower uh, right corner here. This is the exclusion mode, and that's the one that brought up the little X's here. And I can do things like I did before, which is to say, you know what, I really don't want a long radius in there. I just want to exclude. I want to make sure that it goes for the short radius when it goes for one of these. And for that matter, I don't want any threaded. I don't want any welded. So I can toggle those and just say, you know, I, I only want to use things from these libraries right here. Um, so then um, if um, now that I've got the, um, I've got some exclusions in place, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, Oops, here, let's get about to save. Tap the tab key a, a few times. Oops, sorry, I went too far. One, two, three, there. And then uh, if you're not familiar with this, you can do this with walls too, by the way, if you want to see. Um, after selecting a chain, you can uh, position your cursor again and tap the tab key again. 
till you see the chain of your dreams, like from there to there. Then hold down the control key and click, and you'll have a different you know, area. So architect types, if you happen to be uh, watching too, you can do the same thing with walls here. If you want to switch over one section of walls and another section of walls, that's just a rabbit thing. Um, perhaps you know that already. Anyway, I'm going to do uh, design to fabrication after doing all of these exclusions, right? It was in exclusion mode and I do design to fabrication. It says, which one are you working with? I'm going to go with the Victolic services. I click OK. And am I going to get any welded? By the way, this is the open connectors at the end. Any welded? Mm, no, don't see any welded in there. So we're good to go there. Uh, it shifted it over. So it's in this area right here that we got done, right? OK, now, um, uh, so um, additionally, um, you know, here, let's get out of exclusions mode. And I'll show you a new, a, a different one here that um, here let me get uh, I say long radius okay threaded okay welded okay this will be more interesting for the next step so uh, once again uh, welded ones are like this here um, there's a ability to do uh, route and fill as well you know ultimately not everything goes perfectly for you during the conversion process or it doesn't necessarily have to be a conversion process maybe you were uh, drawing a duct or pipe or um, whatever from this direction and you got up to here and then you were coming off of your equipment in this case it's a pump and you got that far and you want to connect them up together uh, these two these two ends together and um, now you could do that manually like I showed you earlier with the stick building these are two different um, uh, radiuses on that. Uh, we have a uh, ability to do uh, route and fill. Uh, so what the way that you work is um, you select one of the open pipes. In this case, it has an open end there. And then um, earlier I showed you optimized links, and but a couple uh, uh, picks over here is route and fill. And if you pick on route and fill, it kicks you into a mode. You've seen this before, green check mark, red X. It says, hey, where do you want to go here? And I and then I just pick on, um, you know, this is my starting point. You see my green line coming off of this, and I want to go over to here. What can you do for me, Autodesk? And I pick on that. <clears throat> and in a more grayed out fashion here, it is showing me uh, uh, one of you can see over here, solution one of six, it also says up here in the ribbon off to the left, um, of what could be one of the solutions. And if I click these arrows right here, it's saying, here's another choice, what do you think of that? Here's another choice, what do you think of that? Now, at the same time, if you look over here to the right, um, you're gonna see, um, you're gonna see some blue dots showing up. You can see the blue dots here. Uh, those are uh, the ones that have the check mark are required. So it's saying, you know, if you don't give me pipe, I can't get this done. You have to use pipe. And I, I need one of these because, uh, frankly, you're coming off of this, Kurt, uh, that sort of a thing. But it's saying in solution number four, I have some other choices here. Do you see? Uh, it's uh, You can just hover over it and it'll highlight in red uh, where they are and where they're being placed. So I, it's saying I'm using these this combination of blue dots and these with the check marks are a must. You have to have them because I need them to get it done. So as you're making your way through the solution there now, if um, if you decide you want to mix and match this with the exclusions mode, uh, because maybe I don't want to uh, have these combined together with the grooved and the welded combined together. So let me cancel out of that once and do exclusions mode first. We had six choices there that you saw a moment ago. I'm in exclusions mode, and I'm going to say that I'd like to exclude uh, threaded. So I'm going to toggle that off and welded. I'll just toggle those two off. Okay, uh, so that'll that'll leave me. You uh, see X's across all of those, uh, but it still leaves me the groove to be able to work with. I'll go ahead and leave both of these two radiuses, um, long radius and short radius elbows up there uh, when we do this next step. So let me try it again. Now with exclusions going on, I select the pipe. 
I go to route and fill. And instead of six, after I uh, select the other pipe that it's going to, it says, uh, listen, Kurt, you know, you know, if you're only gonna give me those to work with, um, I got some different choices here that you could use. I have uh, some that are required, three, three of them are required, and, but I can only give you two solutions, this one and that one. Uh, which one do you want to go with? You can see the um, the elbow is changing uh, with the two solutions there, uh, long radius and short with the blue there. And if you, you find the one of your dreams, maybe it's a short radius, uh, you hit finish. And of course, you can always edit this later. Maybe you'd like to have the uh, transition over at the other end. You could do that instead too, <clears throat> if that doesn't come up. Okay, 10 till. Let me show you just a little bit of what I consider to be even uh, a painful end um, to uh, this, okay, <laughs> a pay painful um, uh, part of this. I'm going to open up another view here. Uh, you know, this is one where you're going to have to do some automation on your own if you want to get this done, and that's by the time we get down to spooling, right? Uh, we want to get this ready to, you know, for little 11 by 17s uh, spool at a time for the pipe. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select um, from here. Uh, tap the tab key and click up there. I'm going to go from there to there and make a spool out of this. So um, I first do an assembly. Now this is the out of the box stuff that we're dealing with here, okay? Um, and there are some ways to automate this that I'll talk about in a minute here, um, five minutes here. Um, so give it a name. This is a, as in, you know, uh, what is this? Chilled hydronic water supply number four, you know? So say that I want that to be number four here. Donut spins a little bit. I actually um, set up a, in advance, set up a view filter on this, um, like this. I'll just give you a glimpse of it, but I normally would put in a bunch of these in a template if you're going to use this process so that um, if it has, you know, spool number four, which I just did, gave it a four, it's going to be green uh, and 88% transparent. Parent. The idea behind that is so that I can tell where I've been and, and, and am I missing any parts, right? You can find out uh, more quickly where you stand with that. Uh, so <clears throat> we got a new assembly down here. And if I uh, right click on that assembly, I can create views from that. Uh, the 3D view might be one I want, the top, the left, the front, the sheet is already toggled on for me. Um, I can choose a uh, schedule to go with this. There's the fitting schedule. And um, maybe I choose uh, different view filters that are uh, keep these consistent here uh, for uh, each of those other views there and then click OK. I won't get into view filters, but you know, so it, the last view pops up there and you can see underneath, I now have a sheet and a bunch of different views that are um, have to do with the spool. So um, if you want more, you know, like uh, that was fittings, I'm going to go back and create another uh, view here and say, um, I just like the, maybe not just the pipe fitting, but the pipe work. I also want to schedule for uh, pipe work as well. See, so you can add to this if you want to, you know, so this one's going in and making the, making the uh, schedule view for me. So I got that, and you can rename this if you want, like uh, right now it's named 101, but I could name it 104 or something. And then you just uh, simply, like you would normally, if you haven't worked with assemblies before, uh, you just drag and drop those onto the sheet then, right? And um, I would automate this step if I were king, uh, do that, because um, this is, one, two, drag, drag, drop, you know, that kind of a thing. And here's the schedule, uh, drag and place that. And here's the um, pipe work schedule, drag and place that. Okay, like that. Um, if you don't like the, and, you know, the numbers that pop up, you know, this is a regular Revit thing. You can say, I don't want numbers on it. I don't want to scale on it, whatever. And, you know, that sort of thing. And you can see here that the schedule came through and picked up all of our fittings, uh, picked up on the pipe that we have, uh, the cut links and the end prep and the, uh, that we might have included in there um, as well. Um, so uh, with that then, <clears throat> 
Um, I thought maybe I'd show you editing the assembly because I think that's kind of a powerful thing here uh, that Revit has going for it. Um, you can see out here, maybe I'll go back to the spooling view for you here, um, that right now it is not uh, including the elbow at the top, okay? So um, if I go, you know, let me close a couple of these views here. There we go. Uh, so you can see right here that it's not including that uh, elbow. What happens all too frustratingly, I don't even know if that is, yeah, that's a word, frustratingly, to uh, end users uh, is that at the last minute you say, ah, you know, I really was planning on uh, this being part of that spool, but now it has to be part of this when you have a change, but you had everything all laid out and stuff. Um, you just simply select the assembly, uh, hit edit assembly, click add, select whatever you want added to it, hit finish, and now that's part of the assembly too. Maybe if I highlight it, you can see it just a little bit easier there. And if you go back over to the sheet, yeah, yep, look at there. See how it's been added into each of those and into the schedule. There it is, 513, just added into the schedule seamlessly. So we can move these things around. Um, you know, Revit's taking care of you with um, uh, editing, uh, you know, um, uh, keeping you safe from yourself, right? Uh, protecting us from ourselves so that we don't end up with the same thing in two different um, two different uh, views here. Okay, so um, uh, let me do just a quick tag here once. I know I'm running out of time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and activate that view. So if you wanted to tag this, um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lock the view, save orientation and lock the view so it can be tagged and then go to the annotate tab and do tag by category or get it from the quick access toolbar. And uh, for me, I have a couple of, uh, this is the assembly tag, so I'm gonna tap the tab key and uh, you know tag this from there to there, tap the tag, tag that one, tap the tab key, so on and so forth, doing that. Now, uh, and then I'll just, you know, uh, whoops, hit escape and then deactivate the view. Same thing with the dimension, you could do an align dimension right on top of that one. Um, so, um, where do these parts come from? Let me do a, a couple of wrap slides here once to talk about that. Uh, some of it you're seeing came right out of the database here uh, from Autodesk uh, to begin with. The Victolic ones you're seeing, with you know, they probably um, did it by this method uh, where they say, you know what, I would like a new elbow and this pattern would work really well for our model you know one two three four tyler might be tyler pipe might be the same way um so you have to go back to autocad for this so this is fabrication cad mep uh, based this remember i was saying that there's you know there's two databases you know th there's a database that's shared between the two of them but not all of the functionality has been moved over into revit land so we end up uh, doing a bit of a hybrid, at least somebody at the firm and then the rest of the people use Revit. Um, a lot of people use both of them. And then uh, the command is make pat, like M-A-K-E-P-A-T, all one word. And then you put in a number like 2523 and you got yourself a new part and then you can put your own connectors and make changes to it and stuff. If you felt like, what you were seeing out of the box, especially towards the end with the trying to make um, assembly views and put them on sheets and things like that, uh, selecting the spool, um, you know, from here to here. Um, when I teach uh, fabrication classes, um, I teach a, a short introduction to Dynamo. And maybe you love that idea, maybe you hate it, because um, it is um, programming, uh, visual programming. Um, but it's included uh, with your Revit install. Um, and here was an example here. I made a, a new um, service called, uh, as in fabrication part service type. And then I made a shared parameter uh, where I could shove whatever the result was between um, these uh, results as it's feeding it across through the electric wires, if you will, through the wires till you got over here. Um, it fed those numbers and such over into the shared parameter, uh, the instance parameter back over my Revit project. 
Um, I might also do a shout out for um, BIM Pro uh, from M Suite. Uh, and speaking of suite, uh, this part is pretty nice after seeing what I did at the very end there. Um, like roll your own kind of a thing at the end um, for uh, a bunch of productivity tools in there, but automated sheet creation and automated schooling uh, for that. Uh, so with that, um, it is 12.59 at least uh, today, and um, I'm going to pass it back over to David here, and maybe uh, while he says a word or two, um, I'll just uh, double check questions. and. Um, I think uh, it, let's just see what uh, David has to say and then we can call it quits. Thank you so much.